Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I have lots to talk about today. Um, the city council had no meeting on Monday, so I don't have a city council report, but I do have a city council tease for the city of Missoula and their committee meetings that are happening this afternoon. Um, we have uh, new programs on MCAT uh, celebrating all things Missoula. Uh, last chance for the Missoula Art Museum um, art before they are sent off to auction. It's not the whole entire art museum, just so you guys know. It's a piece encompassing a lot of different artists who are going to be selling their art in the art auction, which will be happening this Saturday at the Missoula Art Museum. So I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, I got new stop animation, a new stop motion f um, short for you guys that I uh, made with some of our Saturday uh, Saturday drop-ins. And if you're interested in being part of that, it's for kids age 9 to 13 and it happens from 1 to 5 p.m. and it only costs $10. Uh, another thing is I got a lot of art clips and more w in terms of events, um, just news, and of course, we'll start. So we'll kick things off with a little, li a little bit of weather. Um, if you guys uh, have been around the last couple days, uh, it has snowed here in Missoula and we're expected to keep that um, train on uh, going on throughout the this week and possibly next week with snow. Um, it is currently 10 degrees outside. It's fair. It's not too bad. Um, there's a 20% chance of snow and areas blowing snow. Uh, then, of course, it's going to be mostly sunny today. Tonight, you have that 20% chance of snow with a low of 3 degrees. Your high is going to be 15. Um, on Thursday, with a 30% chance of, chance of snow, but things should start warming up by Friday with a high of uh, 26 degrees, just in time for your uh, Friday night. Uh, but, of course, you still have rain and snow mixtures, which could freeze, but the nice thing about it is that you get a chance to check out the ski slopes and see what's going on with that. Um, Black Mountain Ski Area hasn't gotten any fresh new powder, but expect that snow to be carried on over there. A Whitefish hasn't had any fresh snow. It looks like it kind of has been passing them. Biscay Resort had four inches of snow in the last 24 hours. You expect that to increase. Um, Montana Snow Bowl has uh, had three inches in the last 72 hours. Uh, Lost Trail. Um, hasn't had any fresh snow, but it looks like they're, all their slopes are open. Bridger Bowl had three inches with 13 inches in the last 72 hours. Trenton Pasque, um Resort hasn't had any fresh snow. Um, Maverick Mountain had two inches in the last 72 hours. Great Divide, nothing. Discovery Ski Area had that one inch in the last 72 hours, but of course that will change in this in this whole week. So if you guys are planning on going skiing or snowboarding this weekend, maybe the right chance for you. Uh, you might get that nice little uh, rain-snow mixture happening uh, this Friday uh, night as well to kind of uh, in a way uh, make the snow kind of like sheetrock but at the same time it would be kind of nice because it has that kind of frozen top um, just over it to help you go nice and fast for you guys skiing and snowboarding. I don't know I'm not a, I'm not an expert on st skiing and snowboarding but I do know that ice is slick and if you guys like going downhill really fast then that's definitely for you guys. Uh, moving on let's talk about some of the things that are happening in your community uh, today. So in the news uh, two young mountain lions were killed last Friday near Grant Creek adding to the increase in activity in the area. So if you guys haven't noticed uh, the time before that the mother and the three cubs were, uh, were were put down for killing uh, two pets um, and hunting in the Grant Creek area. Um, but in this case, Montana Fish, Wild, and Bar Wildlife and Park says these young lions showed no fear towards uh, the human populace and pets alike when they found the cats feeding on a deer. Uh, last year, I said that the urban deer population increasing, the predators were soon follow, and as you see, the, the predators are starting to understand that a lot of urban deer ha move towards the city, especially during hunting season, and now the predators themselves are just like, huh, well, go to where the food source is, and the deer are not afraid of humans, so it's kind of uh, obvious that even the predators are adapting to uh, human um, populaces as well. So that's something that's happening here locally. Uh, in in state, with a vote of 16 to 6 vote in favor, Ryan Zinke will take another step towards Secretary of the Interior, which will oversee energy and interior departments, with other cabinet nominations getting the riot act read to them from many Democratic leaders. Uh, Zinke's hearing was as boring as anyone uh, who is qualified uh, would get the part. But then again, success is measured in history, not by predictions. Trump it has nominated some of the wealthiest Americans to serve as president, leading to a exhaustive ethics review, a Senate schedule interrupted by breaks 
have also delayed the process. Most of the story I got from Billings Gazette um, sensationalized other candidates that uh, Trump has chosen in his cabinet. I'm just going to cut off there because Montana will have to replace the, how, uh, the House seat. Uh, Zinke will leave within 100 days, so that's about two to three months, w for a special ele election. Uh, Gene Curtis out of Butte has shown interest um, via a vlog, but there's no a official Democratic Party uh, bid for uh, Gene Curtis to do it, but she seems like she's the front runner. Um, Denise, you know, who lost his inky, also said that she does not wish to run um, again um, for the vacant seat. Um, Greg, Greg Giaforte, uh, who ran against uh, Steve Bullock as the governor of the state of Montana, has actually shown interest in replacing the seat, and many Republicans uh, who are also really uh, vibing uh, to get. Um, the seat as well. Um, in the national news, uh, with the Trump administration, um, of course, if you haven't already heard about this this week, the Trump has uh, banned, uh, had like a temporary ban, I think it's like 45 days or so, on incoming immigrants. Um, Homeland Security received most of the um, criticism for allegedly targeting the ban towards Muslims entering the United States. Um, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly stated that temporary pause and uh, assess the strengths and weaknesses of our current system. He he was uh, adamant in saying that the order is not, I repeat, not a ban on Muslims. Of course, here's a picture of uh, countries in the Middle East, um, red being that um, we're going to have an immigration ban here in the United States, and then of course uh, the the yellow is more of a business ties, and most uh, people coming into our country uh, for, are for business. Uh, pretty much only. So here, of course, if you uh, here's some of the list. Um, Let's say here it is. Uh, you got Iraq. Uh, here's the uh, the controversial executive order suspends new refugees admissions for 120 days and blocks travelers from seven mu um, Muslim majority countries: Iraq, Iran, Syria, Yemen, Sudan, Libya, and Somalia for 90 days. Syrian refugees are banned indefinitely. Um, in a tweet, Donald Trump stated, "Our country needs to be uh, needs strong borders and extreme vetting." Now, look what is happening all over Europe and indeed the world. A horrible mess! Exclamation point. Um, and he sent that in uh, about 6 a.m. Um, the other night. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, that's basically what's that, what's happening with the news today. Uh, I got a nice new. Um, um, stop animation short for you guys and this is from the kids and uh, myself working together on a project we all kind of like pitched in and um, made this nice little video it's called border patrol don't let anyone pass this border you hear me no one not even one person here i got it beth oh ah! you okay yeah hey what's going on hey what i can see you i can see you right there me what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you wait a minute. Me. No, uh, stop it. Stop. <laughs> wait. No, not you. No, stop. <laughs> you get in my border. No, stop. What are you doing? Stop. <laughs> uh, what is that ninja? No. <laughs> the border is open. <laughs> Stupid bush. This place sucks. <laughs> Well, that was a little taste of some stop animation um, shorts that are made during our Saturday drop-ins, and that happens from 1 to 5 p.m. If you want more information, you go to mcat.org. But, of course, you can always go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula and me, talking about all sorts of wonderful things. And, of course, as you can see from that nice little profile uh, thumbnail picture from uh, my last episode, you see me talking about our newest and greatest cameras. Um, another great thing that uh, MCAT that's going to be doing is our summer camps. Uh, it is definitely hard to believe that summer is already here in a way because we are going to start promoting all our summer camps and you can click on the link that's on that page um, for more details about how you can sign up your kid um, and we are accepting kids aged 9 to 13 for any of those camps and of course we have our uh, zombie camp which is an all-day camp happening from 9 to 5 p.m. and it's for kids 13, 14, and up. 14 and up is generally the the idea of it. And if you guys uh, are not uh, right in the parameters of the age group that we're looking for, please call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 
MCAT. For more information, you can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org. Uh, you can email me directly uh, uh, for summer camps as well at sramp at MCAT.org regarding the summer camps. And I'm always looking for uh, new uh, folks to come on to my um, uh, morning show to talk about uh, their upcoming events, causes, and more. Um, I'll try to have some, maybe I'll try to have somebody come on for this Friday to talk about uh, some of the art stuff that are happening in and around Missoula. So we'll see about that. And of course, I do have a lot to talk about in terms of art here in Missoula. I do have a nice new PSA that uh, I made the other day uh, with the help of Maddie Albans, who provided the voice for our new um, MCAT PSA that involves uh, nothing but our equipment and some of the available, uh, available space that anybody can uh, rent and check out here at MCAT. MCAT has a space you need to create. We have a fully automated studio that can be controlled in our all-in-one space with an audio board and switcher. Rent our growing list of equipment from video cameras, audio equipment, light gear, and edit station complete with Final Cut Pro 10. Orientation is every second Wednesday of the month, but you can always drop in anytime during our public hours from 11 to 7. Missoula Community Access Television. All-in-one access. Of course, you'll be seeing that um, a lot on MCAT happening, um, just kind of like throwing it out there, just letting you all know that uh, MCAT um, provides training and public hours for anybody who wants to get involved with MCAT. Our orientation is every second Wednesday of the month, starting at 5.30. Please call ahead, 542-6228, to sign up for our orientation, and also your um, you can drop in. I'll be doing orientation next Wednesday, and it is going to be the bomb, so you can totally check that out. Um, anytime at a location at 500 North Higgins, Suite 105. Um, you just go off the uh, Spruce, Spruce Street um, entrance. It's the corner of Spruce and Higgins. Spruce and Higgins. No, that's that's even worse. I'm making it even more confusing for you guys. But you can find out more information about that and how you can uh, be a part of MCAT and create your own program. But of course, if you don't want if you don't know how to create your own program and you are doing an um, upcoming uh, event that you want MCAT to cover, MCAT covers um, Missoula events around in and around Missoula. And uh, I have a little taste of our media assistance grants. Um, we call them MEG, um, for MEG programs, because they are um, shot and produced here in-house from the MCAT and MCAT staff, um, especially uh, our videographer, Ron Scholl, who's the guy who's in charge of um, videoing all the Missoula events here in town. So if you want to get in contact with him, or you can actually log on to MCAT.org directly and just go to forms, and you go to Media Assistant Grant Application. You must be a, a civic or nonprofit group to apply, and you get a special uh, um, deal which provides 12 hours of free video service from Missoula Community Access Television. But without further ado, here are some of the newest programs that are uh, happening on MCAT Channel 189. We work with NHTSA, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, and FTA, and the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. We all came together, not only at headquarters in Washington, D.C., but in the local in, in the states as well to do the bicycle pedestrian assessments. And I think that was a major feat because one assessment was done in each state throughout the United States, including Puerto Rico and Hawaii as well. FHWA led 36 of those assessments, and I think that's good for us, because sometimes we get a bad rap. <laughs> I think that Kevin did a great job to let you know that we are really engaged, and we got it. We realize it's not just about cars. Our blood does not just run as asphalt, and you will see this. Uh, I'll never forget uh, uh, Irving Stone, though. He was uh, such a genteel and gentle man. Uh, and, you know, we were kind of intimidated by him because, you know, he's very famous. He wrote Lust for a Life, you know, the story of Vincent Van Gogh, and the President's Lady, the story of Andrew Jackson and his wife. And someone, asked, there were several questions asked to him, and I've always remembered the answer all these years. Someone said, well, Mr. Stone, should you compromise and just write for money sometimes? And he said, oh, if, uh, no, no, don't do that. If you write a poem to pay the gas bill, 
be assured your utilities will be turned off. It's <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> okay, when I first came to Blotter, I lived in a railroad house right here. You all see that? It's right up here on the east end. My parents, uh, stepdad, can't say a whole lot about that fellow that I really like, but anyway, he lived there and he worked up here. That was the Milwaukee Maintenance Facility that's just, just east of the crossing, between the crossing and the bridge. Over here to Crystal Peak, you see a little white patch of snow up there. And that was the go button. When the snow melted out of that little peak, that was time to, okay, Let's get these gardens plowed up. Let's get them planted. Let's get the produce going in there. Ed, Bill, and I, we flew a lot of kites out there before they start plowing that garden up. Ed could send a kite up, by golly. He could send that up over the old smokestack. There's nothing more immediate than hunger. There's nothing more overwhelming than hunger. So it seems intentional. How do you evoke that feeling? If for pretend you, you have an audience that may not know. But, so that's kind of the idea behind the present progressive, to recreate this state of being. Now, a state of being is incredibly subjective and really quite complicated to try to give voice to. My state of being happy is going to be completely different than Julia's. Hunger is an interesting state of being. So let's start there. Let's talk about what Jeff Gilbert's doing in creating the state of being for us to, I mean, do, do we want to jump? I mean, that's not a place we want to go to. We work very hard every day to not experience hunger. All right, so those are some of the programs you can see on MCAT um, anytime at MCAT.org via, via our video on demand. But that's some of the new programs that are hitting the airways on MCAT that you'll be seeing pretty much all week long on MCAT. They, we usually show it twice on MCAT, but I'm moving on. Let's, let's talk about some of the things that are happening in your city um, that's basically happening today um, at your city um, um, committee meetings. All the meetings in the committee meetings are starting at 12.55 today. Um, uh, I mean, pretty close to 1 o'clock. Uh, most of the time they have uh, meetings that start as early as 10 a.m., sometimes even 9 a.m. if they have a lot to talk about. It is uh, the 1st of February. They're going to be building up, but here are some of the things that are happening. Um, with the adoption of the 2015 Urban Forestry Management um, um, plan contained numerous goals, objectives, and implement implementation strategies to move the management plan forward. In particular, the goals and objectives in the management plans calls for a development of neighborhood planting plans and for encouraging citizen participation during urban forestry management activities. Uh, the process of developing these neighborhood um, planting plans incorporated the strategies found in the management plan. And they'll be talking about a little bit more about that, urban forestry, uh, more about like planting um, fresh new trees and especially if you are live in Missoula and you kind of know about the urban forestry, urban forests that are happening and all the trees that were planted back in the 60s, a lot of the trees are getting older and are past their lifespan. Uh, they'll talk more about this at the meeting um, today at starting at 1255. This is during the Parks and Conservation. And of course, they'll be talking about Kiwanis Park's new pavilion. A new pavilion will be discussed uh, for Kiwanis Park. $44,650 is budgeted and available for the shelter project. Roughly $13,000 is available for shelter permits, uh, assembly, and installation. So Kiwanis Park is definitely getting uh, quite a little facelift in, t in terms of, of the Fort Missoula Regional Park bond that passed a year or so, a couple years ago where they're, uh, well, actually 2014, uh, where uh, the uh, million dollars was devoted to uh, updating um, playgrounds in the parks, and this is just roughly another uh, project that will be 
uh, worked on today and be discussed during Parks and Conservation during uh, the Parks and Conservation Committee meeting starting at 12.55. The Land Use and Planning will uh, also approve a new microbrewery and tavern that will be located on 515 South Higgins. Um, this is part of the um, working through a zoning deal to kind of uh, mix um, breweries in more residential areas, but through a tavern permit that the city has kind of implemented and they'll be working with this. And if you don't like it, you guys can discuss this at 2 p.m. Um, this afternoon during the land use and planning. Um, Here's another, uh, com in this other committee, um, in February 2016, the City of Missoula Development of Services, along with Missoula Downtown Association, Downtown Business Improvement District, and Missoula Redevelopment Agency hosted a one-day workshop to discuss approaches to address design quality of development that is keeping with Missoula's character and sense of place. So they're doing a developmental workshop this afternoon starting at uh, 3.25 and it will only go on for about an hour or so because they're also discussing the Fox site in terms of financing through uh, the tax increment funding and so on and so forth. This is during the admin and fine administration and finance committee, and that's happening in Missoula for you guys. Um, but uh, without further ado, I have another art clip for you guys. This is an art clip that I've been showing, and I'll only have to show it to you guys two more times. And this is your last chance to get a little tease, but go to the Missoula Art Museum. Check out some of the art that you may never see again because it's going to be auctioned off to private owners. So unless you know all the people who buy the art on the auction, then there's not, there's not going to really be a big chance for you guys to actually see this art that I'm about to show you guys. So without further ado, here is uh, the, the second to the last time I'll play this art clip from the Missoula Art Museum for their 45th annual Missoula Art Museum Art of the Auction. <laughs> And you can check all of that art at the Museo Art Museum just off of Patty Street across from the old uh, United States Post Office here in the heart of Missoula, downtown Missoula. Um, moving on, here are some of your events that are happening for your Wednesday. Uh, at 11 a.m. today, uh, Children's Museum of, of Missoula will be doing a face painting. So butterflies, Batman, and kitties. Oh, my. That's what it says. Uh, these are just some of the few options you can choose if you join them for their face paintings. It's going to be at the Children's Museum starting at 11 a.m. Uh, Flamenco uh, beginning um, dance classes is happening at the Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater School happening at 1 p.m. this afternoon. This weekly class uh, builds a foundation appropriate for beginning, beginning students and those wishing to polish technique, focus on technique uh, specific to flamenco such as uh, braccio and arm movements, footwork, florio and or hand movements, and uh, Palmas, along with the universal dance techniques such as working correctly, body, line, and posture, and interpretation, um, otherwise known as contemporary dance, uh, sometimes. Flamenco plus contemporary. Uh, here is, uh, but of course, you're um, encouraged to bring your own cassinets. Uh, NAMI Crafts, uh, a free weekly arts and crafts group for anyone living with 
living with or affected by mental illness issues. They're doing this at NAMI Missoula, 2 p.m. this afternoon. Um, if you guys uh, want a school that's a little more Catholic uh, than public school system, then this next event is the event for you. Um, they're doing uh, St. Joseph uh, um, School's Information Night. So J St. Joseph School is a uh, elementary school that leads in Delilah Sacred Heart, and they're doing a 5.30 um, p.m. and 7 p.m. orientation type of deal for any um, folks who want to um, have their kid put into a Roman Catholic run school. Uh, save the date. The winter enrollment information night starts tonight at 5.30. Uh, Loyola Sacred Heart and St. Joseph Elementary and Middle School will host their winter enrollment information night starting at 5.30 in each school. And the first one of course, will be at uh, St. Joseph's School at 5.30 p.m., and I believe the uh, 7 o'clock one will be at Loyola Sacred Heart. Um, if you have a kid that goes that's going into high school or somebody who's um, you want to be enrolled in the school, have that happen, and that's happening at the St. Joseph's School and Loyola Sacred Heart, 5.30, then 7 p.m. Um, there's an art call at the Zach. They're looking for, uh, they're doing a mini show, and they're looking for uh, artists. On uh, March 11th, 2017, the Zootown Arts Community Center will celebrate all things small with its fifth annual mini show benefit uh, at Missoula Historic Wilma Theater. This gala event will bring together Missoula's creative community with a mini dessert competition, a mini art ex exhibition, a uh, silent uh, silent uh, Wait, wait, what is it? Silent and live auction and more. This year, we'll also select three to five mega pieces to be auctioned off. You may submit to the mini gala category, the mega category, or both. This is an important fundraiser for the Zootown Arts Community Center. The, your support, your round pr uh, programming, arts, and education in the community. And, of course, you're invited to uh, submit your um, miniature or mega creation for the mini art show, which will be sold the night of the event through silent auction, um, for most works, and there's a couple of live auctions that if there's something that really stands out, they do a nice little live auction. It's a good exposure thing, but also you get to sell some of your art, and some of the uh, proceeds will also go towards the Zootown Arts Community Center. Um, helping kids cope with divorce. The Children's Museum of Missoula is going a little bit heavy for sure, but it's still just as important and helping cope, kids cope with divorce. And this is at Rattlesnake Elementary School, 1220 Pineview Drive. Whether a divorce or separation has happened recently or some time ago, children relive the experience to various degrees uh, as they pass through different developmental stages. This free class will help you learn how to support your child throughout their childhood, teach you what helps and what hurts, and explains ways of communicate with your co-parent in ways that will minimize harm to your kids. Register online at MissoulaClasses.com or call 721-7690 for more information. And it's free child care is also available while you take these classes as well. Again, the number is 721-7690. And this is Helping Kids Cope with Divorce. And this is hosted by the Children's Museum of Missoula. And this will be at 615 to 815 at Rattlesnake School Elementary. Um, Missoula uh, Community Needs Assessment. Um, this is a Missoula Public Library um, event that's happened at the Missoula Public Library. The City of Missoula Community Needs Assessment Wednesday um, tonight from 6 to 7.30 uh, at the Missoula Public Library, uh, 301 East Main Street, Missoula. What is your vision for the future of Missoula? How can we work together to continue improving our city's quality of life, housing, and economic development? The City of Missoula Housing and Community Development uh, Department will accept applications for the Community Development Block Grant um, and Home Investment Partnerships as part of a process they will hear community members about their priorities for Missoula. Um, this is your opportunity to share your ideas, wishes, and plans for the project in areas of housing, economic development, uh, public facilities, infrastructures, and community service, which may be eligible uh, for f uh, funding through the city of Missoula. So if you have a really good idea, they'll fund you. Great. And this is happening at 6 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. It's called Missoula Community Needs Assessment. So if you guys are tired of this and that, you can explain it and what kind of solutions would help um, best help with Missoula. And you can call them at 552 Six three nine six. You can also go uh, to ci.missoula.mt.us for more information. Um, also, at the public library, you have open hours in the makerspace starting this morning at 10 a.m. Uh, my iPad and iPhone. Learn about iPads and iPhones at the Missoula Public Library starting at 1230 um, this afternoon. A Missoula um, Middle School Writers Group has happened on the Missoula Public Library after school at 3.30 p.m. Um, and that's 
um, all your library events for uh, your Wednesday. Um, here are some of your music events. Um, um, open mic at the VFW is happening tonight. Sharing the Groove celebrating the music of fish is happening at 4.30 at the Top Hat. And it's during their happy hour. Imagination Jam Society at Imagination Brewing Company. You got a uh, country dance lesson with Kathy Clark at the Sunrise Saloon tonight at 7 o'clock. And following that, there's their uh, karaoke, country karaoke at 9 p.m. Um, there's craftastic karaoke at the Badlander tonight. Uh, Milk Crate Wednesday at the Palace. They're doing electronic music. Um, and that's uh, pretty much wrapping up everything that's happening. And you can always do some karaoke contest at the Eagles Lounge in Missoula. He, um, here is another art clip for you guys to kind of like uh, clear the palette out. And, um, and when I come back, I'll talk everything you need to know about your Thursday events. Welcome back, and now it's time for the rest of your events happening for your Thursday. Um, there's the South American Lunch at the University of Montana tomorrow at 11 a.m. So uh, join the university and staff and students for lunch celebrating many cultures of South America. Uh, you can um, go to, at 1230, the community discussion on peer support specialists, coaches. Uh, this is the Missoula City Council Chambers. This is a PFR community discussion. Um, coaches are in... Coaches are individuals in recovery who work with those recovering from addictions, mental illness, and or dealing with criminal justice system. Discussion includes Senate Bill 62 certifying peer support specialists, how returning citizens in recovery can be trained as peer support coaches, and the impact of peer support in uh, redis. Sorry, I'm not going to pronounce that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But it's supposed to help people who are recovering from addiction and mental illness and dealing with crim the criminal justice system as well. Uh, there's Antro Antropod Fossils 101 at the Missoula Insectarium happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. How do you know uh, that there uh, used to be a 8-foot-long millipede? <laughs> uh, when conditions are just right, dead plants and animals can be pres preserved as fossils. During this activity, they'll look at th and hold some real-life uh, trilobite, uh, trilobite fossils and then create and explore a few model fossils of our own. Um, you can check that out. It's going to happen 3 p.m. in the afternoon about uh, at the Missoula Insectarium, which is just off of Front Street. Solar Guy in Missoula, Jeffrey Brewing Company, uh, the Montanans, uh, according to them, According to the Solar Guy, they des Montana deserves the freedom to make their own energy choices, and that's why they, he's doing a tour and meet up uh, with the Solar Stoked and Solar Curious across the state of Montana. At each uh, stop, and he, he'll present what he's up to and bring local experts to dig up the area's opportunities here in Missoula, plus local fare and craft uh, beverages will be provided. This is going to be at Draftworks Brewing Company tomorrow at 4 p.m. They're just talking about... Uh, um, solar energy here in the state of Montana as he just goes travels around probably goes to a couple of breweries drinks some beers and they discuss solar power well it's cool whatever uh, <laughs> climate smart Missoula um, is doing a monthly meetup uh, it's called zero waste um, at five o'clock imagination brewing company uh, from five to seven learn connect and get involved each month they focus discussion on one of the 
buckets or focal areas of the community climate action plan and bring and share your ideas connect with partnerships with others and learn um, current climate efforts in Missoula short presentation at 515 and they have some snacks as well that'll be happening at 5 p.m. at Missoula at uh, Imagination Brewing Company just off of Broadway across from Missoula Fresh Market or the POV um, locating the Jocko Indian Trail Lolo Community Center will be hosting a uh, Archaeologist uh, Milo McLeod um, describes his findings uh, of an old fur trapping era cache along with historic Jocko Indian Trail connection. The Mission and Swan Valley presentation will include a discussion of other historic travel routes and the immediate and greater Missoula area. That's happening at the Missoula Community Center tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Here are some of your library events happening tomorrow. Tiny Tales is happening Thursday morning at 10.30. Make it and take it on Thursday at Big Sky. That's the Missoula Public Library. I believe at Big Sky means it's going to be at Big Sky Branch uh, Library. Um, there's computer, computer, computer electronics in the makerspace at 3 p.m this uh, tomorrow afternoon and Friday uh, Lego Club wraps up all your Thursday events at 3 30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library so that's everything you need to know about what's happening at the library um, here are some of your events um, at the Wilma Theater Eration Lost and Found Winter Tour will be playing at the Wilma Theater it's reggae country dance show through instructor Kathy Clark it will be at the Sunrise Saloon live jazz at Plonk Open mic at the Broadway rocking karaoke by hosted by Aaron B rocks at the Dark Horse Lucky Penny TPS, no fancy. Um, Kaylin, um, Kaylin Krishbach will be at the palace, and it's going to be music, folk music, tomorrow night. Uh, Faster Rabbit and Friends will be doing live music at VFW. It's going to be rock. Local Yoko will be playing at the Top Hat Lounge um, tomorrow night as well. So you can check all these events by going to MissoulaEvents.net. You can find out more information about Wake Up Missoula by logging on to WakeUpMissoula.Wixsite.com slash WakeUpMissoula. So nice that we made you write it out twice. You can also find more information about MCAT by going to MCAT.org. We got our summer camps all ready to go. We got all sorts of great things. This picture is from two years ago, as you can imagine. And I just kind of look at the picture of the uh, L and M of our old uh, Wake Up Missoula set, and I kind of look at it now, and I just see it's definitely not as colorful as it used to be. Maybe we'll have to do some touch-ups for Wake Up Missoula, but I don't know. I might ruin it. So well, <laughs> thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, if you want more information, like I said, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also reach us, MCAT at MCAT.org. You can find out all the links and more, everything you need to watch here on MCAT channel 189 or our Civic channel 190. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.